Hi there, everybody. Very Dead here. This is Very Dead Gaming. Today I'm uh, doing some void opal core mining. <clears throat> I got a little bit low on credits, so I want to get back up over a billion just so that I have uh, plenty of credits for whatever I want to do and I don't have to worry about it. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, I'm in a uh, icy asteroid ring, icy ring around a, a planet somewhere in the bubble. Um, and it's uh, uh, nobody else seems to be hitting this one. So it's uh, putting out quite a few uh, cores. And here I, I already uh, found one. So I'm just going to get started by cracking this open and we're going to top it up. I'm uh, The ship I'm flying is my crate Mark II. It's fully kitted for core mining, um, optimized for it, doesn't have anything else. Um, and uh, it's, it's basically built for one purpose, and that is to make me lots of money mining cores. So let's get right to it. And uh, I hope you all had a, a great weekend. And um, the week is going well for you. Mine is going pretty good. I'm uh, pretty happy with... Uh, I'm looking uh, at just how things are going this week. Uh, nice and easy. Not too, uh, not too challenging after, you know, that first week getting back from vacation is always tough. Because you have to readapt to... All the crap that you didn't have to deal with for, for a whole week. Anyways, back to it. Feeling good. Alright, so we're gonna hit this fish here. Alright, so that's a low... Low, uh... Low strength fisher there. Now I'm gonna go... To average strength for the next one. go and so what you do is you want to I'm gonna charge this on up all the way all right so now I'm gonna look for a high well let me see there's average there's a high strength so we'll let me hit this high strength and see if we can't get it right on target I'm trying to get it into that optimal range See, we're gonna go. Oh, didn't quite make it. I kind of missed the fissure. Dang it. Right, so we're gonna hit this average strength. Clear. Kind of running short on time here. Alright. There's this average strength fissure. There we go. Let's just back up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna hit this guy with a. Oh no! Uh, I'm gonna have to, uh... Dang it! You. I don't have time to disarm it. Oh well. So I just screwed this... this one completely. Damn it. That's what happens. See, the these asteroids are behaving very strangely. My pattern that I always use isn't working. So I've got one high. There's an average. And come on, select please. Select please. Alright, there's an average. So let me hit these two average ones and see what happens. That's uh that's the first time I've had a fail failure to detonate. In probably two, uh, I don't know, two months. Uh, of course, I was saving it up for my live stream. All right. Nope. So now we got a frickin' look at that. 
Asteroid Fisher, I gotta disarm it. Pain in the ass. Alright, so now we gotta try. Not fully charged. Alright, so here we go. We're gonna hit this guy. Unbelievable! So we gotta go. We gotta disarm this one. Because I'm not not getting any any uh, success here. So the high strength. Let's try this guy. Unbelievable. It looks like I'm gonna. If this doesn't work, I've wasted this entire asteroid. Unfortunately. Unbelievable. All right. Well, that's all we get. Back it up just a bit. That's pretty sad. I totally ruined this asteroid. So I'm going to get a very low yield. Oh, well, not bad. Unbelievable. It... Usually when you overdo it like that, you get nothing. I'll take it. But this is going to give me probably close to 17 tons, it looks like. Which is uh, about all you can ask for. It's, uh, it's about the maximum you get. And all I'm doing is just maneuvering around so that I can see the pieces and just blast them off so that my limpets can then grab them. And that seems to be... It's better to... Uh, for me, it's better to stay out. I lose a lot of limpets when I, when I fly in there. Um, I'm not sure why, but... They... Oh, let me see one... We gotta dump off. Uh, I have too many limpets. Of course I do. We'll just dump off 20 of them there. There we go. Don't need... Never... I never need a full load of them. I don't know why I did that. I need about... I... My, my capacity is about 120... It's 128 tons. And usually if I take 80 tons... Or 80 limpets... That's plenty enough to fill the cargo hold. And if I take more than 80, then I end up having to dump a bunch off. Alright, there we go. These are the last few. Let me see. Yeah, that's it. And so far, 9 tons. And it looks like I'm going to get close to between 16 and 17 tons off of this uh, asteroid. Which is pretty much the maximum, so yeah, I'm pretty shocked about that. Oh, I have been uh, doing core mining. I started yesterday. I was down to about 200 million credits, which is pretty low with how I spend credits. So <clears throat> I decided that it was time to start yesterday. Um building back up to a billion credits. So I played for a couple hours yesterday and I played for about an hour this morning uh, before my live stream. And uh, yeah, we're gonna just push forward just a bit. And uh, <clears throat> my credit balance is now, I mean, I'm at 938 million. So I went from 200 million to 938 million in basically four, it'll be about four hours of playtime. So um, if you're not core mining to make credits, 
you are missing out because it's the really the easiest way um and it's it's not as mind numbing as as it used to be uh because it goes by pretty quick and you make a decent amount of credit so and okay so and i've been just uh trying to keep count of uh the amount that I get per um, asteroid and so that, okay so I got 14 there not quite as many as I usually get you can uh, if you optimize it I think you can get three more 17 tons um, and uh, that uh, that's the goal anyways but sometimes I just uh, screw it up okay, scoop, scoop. All right, so the next step in core mining, of course, is prospecting. You gotta find those asteroids. And hold on a sec, I, I set my game level so you guys can hear me a little bit better. All right, so it's pulse, pulse wave scanner and you just keep boosting and you're looking for a very specific type of asteroid like that's nice and bright but it's the wrong shape that one back there is the right shape but it's not bright enough so take a look yeah you see how it's starting to get dim not quite right Ooh. It's just about covering as much of this asteroid belt as possible. As quickly as possible. Um, there's a spawn rate, I guess. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's a spawn rate for these uh, core asteroids. And uh, that's a, that looks like it might be one right there. Let's take a look. Nope, it's not. But that one up there looks like it is. Yeah, there's no no uh, fissures there, but there are definitely fissures on this one. Did you see how they're slightly different? This one, ah, no, see, this one doesn't look good either. Might be. Yeah, it's gonna, it's not gonna. Well, I might. This one's an in-between kind of a weird one, but I don't think it has. Co I don't think it does. I don't see any fissures. Yeah. Oh wait, I didn't. Yeah. It was worth, it was worth looking at. Ooh. Let's see. Yeah, so we're getting a lot of fakes that they look very similar to a, an asteroid that has a core. I gotta get out of here, but I, there's like everywhere I want to go, there's an asteroid. This is, I found the best place to hunt them. Because you can get down below and you can get a good field of view. It is. Alright, so I think I found one. At least it has a core. I can't get a good view of it because this other asteroid popped right in front of it. Yeah, see how bright that is? Let's take a look when we pop it again. Yeah, that might be a fake too. It's a little bit brighter than the last one. Let's see if it... it oh, no, I, I can see... Uh, look at that. See how it turned green and red? That's how you know it. What If it's a fake, what'll happen is as you get this close, it'll get really dim. But if it has a core in it, it'll turn green or red or black. Uh, and that's bromelite, though. And that's what I... This, this particular set of rings has been kind of crappy. Because it's... Uh, oh, look at that one. So two cores right next to each other. 
One was bromelite, and I'm hoping this one's void opals, because it's nice and dark. I'll hit it again. And see how it changed again as I got closer? And it's void opals. Look at that. Beautiful. That's what I was looking for. All right. <clears throat> so, I, my last asteroid, I totally screwed. Hey, hey there, Major Fish. How you doing? Um, welcome to the stream. I'm uh, topping up my credits. So, uh, I got 14 tons of void opals from the last one, but I totally screwed up. I, I kept overshooting the um, optimal range. Okay, so here we go. Let's let's see if I can do it. You know, I, I'm finding that mining and talking is a it's a hard thing for me. I guess I'm a. All right, let me. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is here. I'm, let me go switch to just thrusters here. There we go. All right, now I'll just wait for it to come down to me. All right, so there's one. Nice. Hey, I uh, took a week off. Went to San Francisco. Kind of recharged the batteries, uh, did the whole tourist thing with my family. It was great. And, uh, but, it, you know, and that was, uh, well, coming up on two weeks ago. Because this week was the, well, last week was the week back. And, like I was saying, readjusting to uh, the BS of your everyday life after you've been on a vacation, that can be difficult. It, it, it can really bring you down. All right, I'm going to hit this guy and see if I don't overshoot. Ah, oh, look at that optimal range. We're gonna detonate this baby and let me see. Yeah, we'll go this way. Oh, this. I'm just gonna spin around. There we go. We'll just kind of. All right, so this one I this one I somehow managed to do right, so we'll take it. That is the sound of money right there. And uh, what I'm going to do today is, once I crack a billion, um, I, that's like my comfort range, because I, I seem to be able to spend half a billion at a, in about 10 minutes, if I, uh, I mean, without even trying. So, I always like to have at least twice that amount, so if I just kind of get an itch to buy some ship and spend a lot of credits, I have it. Can't seem to get to that guy. Yeah. Oop. Come on now. Don't be that way. There, you gotcha. Alright, so I got a couple more down here. The distribution's a little rough on this one. They're not easy to... Oops, I'm gonna hit something. There you are. Oh, that one's hiding in that crevice there. Oh, there's another one around here somewhere. There it is. I think this is the last one. Boy, look at them. They're just hidden in these little crevices this time. I like the ones where they're just all on the same side and you don't have to really fly around and you can just knock them all out. I'm on now. I always forget to change my pips. 
Because the uh, Brazen Blaster does use some uh, well, some weapons power on this thing, because I really don't... And I'm... I gotta get out of here. Oh! There we go. Just sometimes you gotta get out of that asteroid, because your limpets can't seem to figure out how to fly around and they fly right into him. Let me see. All right. Clear underneath. So I, uh, I got down to around 200 million credits and uh, decided that that was too low for comfort. So yesterday I, I played for a couple of hours, maybe two and a half hours. And got up to about seven, seven hundred twenty million, and then today I I did one, one run to this asteroid belt, and uh, filled up my cargo, and it took me about an hour and ten minutes, and so now I'm up to about nine hundred forty million credits, and uh, okay, we got to go get this guy. We're just a little too far. And this last run should put me over a billion. And then um, I'm I'm feeling a little altruistic today, and like I wanna wanna help out some people that are in a little trouble. I'm gonna get take my beluga. Hey, thank you very much <laughs> for the host, Major Fish. I love seeing that. Um, I uh, I'm gonna do uh, rescue some hapless passengers that have. Uh, run afoul of the Thargoids. Refugees. I have a, a nice beluga that's just beautiful to look at. Giant red tiger stripe thing. A couple of things if you're if you haven't done um, this type of core mining. I have not played No Man's Sky. It's, uh, I, I looked at it and I didn't think it was gonna suit my game playing style. So I, I never really, never really took it any further than that. There is a new game, however, that is nothing at all like this, that I am particularly interested in trying out. And uh, I'm just wait. It just got released, and so it's a little buggy, and so I was. I decided I would wait until they released a patch, because that would tell me a couple of things. One, if they are are releasing patches in a timely fashion, and uh, and then see see what uh, the people who actually have the game. Um, it is called Generation Zero. Uh, look it up on Steam. It is a, kind of an open world co-op game where you play with three other of your friends and it's basically PvE, it's you versus the environment and the the kicker is that you and your friends were off on a vacation, you come back to your hometown and all the people are gone, everything's destroyed and um, it's overrun by vicious killer robots of all different sizes. So you have to scavenge, you have to uh, work as a team, you have to kind of figure out how to piece together the story of what happened. Very interesting. Anyways, uh, I showed it to my son and he was like, I am all over this. <laughs> and it's uh, because it's not a, it's not one of the big AAA studios making it, it's a little bit cheaper. And uh, it's I think $30 for the game. Uh, which is a you know less than half the price of like uh, a triple A rated game. So um, I think this guy is a is a got a core. Yeah, see how it's red and glowing when you get close. And when I was coming up to it, how it was like dark green. And look at that void opals. There you have it. Um, but yeah, so we both agreed that we think this game is. It looks it looks awesome. I mean it. It looks like everything I want in a game, you know, challenging, mystery, uh, open world, all that kind of stuff. So, anyways, we'll see. Um, 
You know, I, I know a lot of games don't ever live up to their hype. This one didn't have a lot of hype, and the reviews are really mixed, and I think it's because of the different people that, you know, they have different expectations of what a game should be. And a lot of the low-rating ones, um, they complain that the game is too slow, and you know, but they've only got two hours in the game. And it's like, well, it's an open-world kind of survival game, so... Not a lot happens in the beginning on purpose so that you can kind of figure out how to play before you die. All right, so here we go. I'm going to hit this guy. Let's see. All right. Optimal yield. That's what we're looking for. We'll just spin around. There we go. And we'll just... Time to detonate. And so what I do is I just fly about um, 2.3 or 2 kilometers away. That way my shields don't get blasted. And I mean, you can watch that majestic explosion. Isn't that, it's wonderful. But yeah, if I get that game, I will definitely live stream it. Um... I might pick another day to do that on though, because I don't like to interrupt my uh, Elite Dangerous schedule. Because that's my game time as well. You know, you guys, not only do I stream it, but if I don't play it during my live stream, I don't get to play it. Um, I I did get a little time yesterday to play, which was nice. Uh, but typically on a weekday, I don't, you know, because there's work. <laughs> You know that thing. And because I'm, you know, this is not my full-time job. Because, uh, you know, I can't make any money at this. At least not yet. Um, I have to, you know, you just kind of have to be efficient with your time. I play a little bit. Uh, I stream. And, uh, oh, i got to load my cargo scoop. See, that's a, the other thing that happens when I when I chat with you guys a lot is I forget to do the basic things like, um, and it you know it's it's just in my shortcoming that I get distracted from what I'm doing by talking. It, I guess it takes an <laughs> being social takes a, a large chunk of my brain processing power, a lot more than for most people I think. All right, so let me see if I can get out of here. Oh, I just... All right. What? I'm near something. Ah. There we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right, so what I did get 14 the last time. I'm up to 33 already. So already this core uh, was was much better than the previous one, so... And yeah, I mean, look at they my guys have been collecting, and there's still tons more to get. Oh, gotta dump some limpets. We'll dump 15. There we go. Then you just abandon those other. Make sure if you're gonna dump limpets, abandon them because otherwise your limpets will, your active limpets will try and collect them again. And I just don't need them. But so we're at. Th what already 36 tons not bad hey there quantum rick welcome welcome all right so we're just about done um i keep losing limpets i keep crashing into something i think i'm there let's get a little closer to these guys I think because they have to fly, you know, they really make the limpets stupid. They they just they'll fly into the asteroid instead of around it, and I just don't I just don't understand that. You know, we have these amazing spaceships, yet they can't program a limpet for uh, collision avoidance. All right, there we go. We're getting lots of void opals. All right, there's the other guy. 
Come on, go get it. There's looks like is there another one out there? No, that's the last one. There is another one. We got. Oh, I definitely. Oh, <laughs> did you hear him crash? <laughs> ah, stupid limpets. They all crashed. Oh, you know I bet why. You know what? What I've noticed? There's a bug. With. Uh... Oh no! There it is. See it? No, I can't. I can't seem to. It's inside. Let's see. Where are you at? You're way that. 400 meters. Let's see if it's sometimes they're inside. Okay, no, but he's not. There he is. All right, so we'll just pop another limpet. What I I was losing all I kept losing all my limpets. There was one more uh, void opal, and so I went to investigate, and it was inside of the body of the asteroid, but it was saying that it wasn't. So my limpets were just flying right into the asteroid. And so that's a, it's a kind of a one of those annoying bugs that they just never seem to fix. Yep, ice rings, you got it. All right, cargo hatch away. Let's This is where you find void opals. They're they're only found in icy rings. A uh, couple other tips, always turn on your night vision. Um, they make the uh, asteroids stand out better, and they also make the signal a little bit cleaner, so you can more easily see uh, the ones with the cores compared to the, the ones that don't have cores. All right, so I know, uh, see that really bright one might be, but it might be the wrong shape, let's see. Oh no, that one's good. You see how it's got that really, it goes gold and then really black and then there's some green. Yeah, that has got a core. I'm not sure if it's void opals though. That's why you always investigate. Ah, yeah, look at that. And I'm finding them left and right now. You can see they between cores, that was just a few boosts and I found another one. Um, but, I mean, you can go, what I typically do is I, I really look for the uh, kind of like the the best um, ring systems to prospect because there's a, there's a certain type that just work better and what you want to find is ones that do not have a lot of traffic so that they haven't been really mined. Because if there's a lot, if you see that there's a lot of other commanders visiting that system that your rings are in, chances are they're tapped out. And uh, and so you're you're, what's going to happen is the uh, the cores are going to be very few and far between. All right, so here's an average strength. So I think if I hit this up full, kind of fully charged, it should work. Uh, didn't get me optimal though. Let me see high strength. All right, so I'm gonna hit this guy Now see this what I've noticed is that I'm not getting the same Consistent results I used to get All right, so I'll hit this guy with a just a low All right, there we go optimal and If you want me to explain what I'm doing there and how I'm deciding What to charge it to and what you know that kind of thing uh, I can explain it. It's turn around. Oh, I kind of lost my asteroid. Where are you? Oh, I, there we go. Alright. Alright, so here we go. More money. That's what that is. All right, so we'll kind of close the gap here. And I try to stay out of the, uh, 
kind of the interior of that asteroid if I can, because it it just makes it such a pain in the butt to you have to do a heck of a lot more flying. But and you can you can hear how cold it gets when you crack open these asteroids. I mean, my heat is down to two percent, so it's just sucking the heat right out of my my ship. Yeah, I'm having a real hard time orienting myself here. All right, there we go. There's one. They're all in these little crevices. It's so hard to hit them. Alright. So, I'm, uh... My uh, cargo hold can, uh... Carry 128 tons, which puts me right over 200 million credits per mining run. And my ship is, uh, this is an 80 million credit ship, basically. Let me check, is that the last one? Oh, I got one, two more. Where are they hiding? This, oh, they're up above me. I lost all my limpets again. You see how they just keep, as soon as you start flying into There we go. Alright. Oh. Don't want to hit anything. Alright, so... The ship I'm flying right now is a Crate Mark II. Um, here, let me quick... Let me see if I have Coriolis up. It doesn't look like I do. Here, let me... I'll post a link for you guys. All right. So here it comes in the chat. This is the ship I'm flying. It's it's full loadout. Um, they did something weird for uh, April Fool's Day at Coriolis. They they changed it all this to the words look like Elmer Fudd is speaking. So it's really like flame shift dwive. They changed all the spelling, so it's really kind of annoying. <laughs> but I think they did it for April Fool's Day. Oh, lost all my limpets again. Dang it. All right, so that means I got I just got to get out of here. There we go. Oh, I see. I'm I'm wondering what all these uh weird noises are and they're coming they're coming from uh Coriolis. They they've got sound effects on and stuff. So I'm just going to have to turn that off. All right. So anyways, we're almost to uh 54, so there you go. Almost half full. And you can see my, my credit totals are nice. Uh, this is how you do it, guys. Get yourself a ship. And, I mean, even if you get one that can only hold 50 tons, you're going to be making 50 million to 65 million per run. And your ship's not going to be that expensive. And then when you get, let's say you, you make a couple hundred million, then upgrade your ship to something that can make 200 million per run. And then boom, you're just set. So that's the way to do it. Um, I was at 200 million 
yesterday. I'm at 938 million today. So, I mean, the math is perfect. I mean, <laughs> you cannot argue with that. All right. So now I'm going to fly out a little bit here because the a little too far from these void opals. There we go. All right, there's one. I'm just gonna come to a stop here and wait for my limpets. <clears throat> so now I gotta go one last void opal and for some reason my limpets aren't going after it because it's there it is <clears throat> I mean it's right here and my limpet went way the heck out of nowhere to get it <coughs> excuse me I'm choky <clears throat> tickle in my throat. I think I need to get some water. I think there's another one right here. <coughs> Let's see. That does not look like one. But I'll, I'll get a look closer and see. No, it's not. I'm not changing color the right way. Yeah, so that's not. But I always like to investigate. You don't want to miss one. And the technique is, yeah, well, you want to get a ship that you can boost with a lot. And remember, the, the faster you can boost and the faster your top speed is, the more or the quicker you're going to find the cores because they're kind of a set distance apart from each other. Alright, I think I saw... Might be one up here. Well, no. That's a fake. Definitely. Wrong shape. Might be a real one. Uh, it looks like it is. All right, so we'll just. And you see what I'm looking for? How it has the dark lines on it? It goes. That's what you're looking for. Now, if I if it goes really dim when I get close, uh, see that might not be one, because it's it's too uniform and it looks like it's just the contours. Yeah, that's not one. I'll I'll put a probe in it just to confirm it, but I don't think that is one. I could be wrong. We'll see. That's why I launched the probe. Yeah, see, nothing. Oops. Give me a sec. be. Nope. This guy over here. See? Yeah, there you go. That, I think, is one. Yeah. They pop them out at you. And they oh, there's always fakes nearby. Now, see, that, that doesn't look right. Doesn't look like it's going to be one. You can see it's very close, but then, yeah, see that? That's not one. 
And if I, I'll tell you, the other way you can look is when you have your uh, night vision on, you can just kind of look at the ends. And right here, there would normally be a fissure, a big crack, and there's no crack. So, you know, it, it doesn't even have a core, so you don't even have to waste any limpets on it. See, that's the wrong shape. It's too small and too round. The one next to it, that one, if it was like that, it would have a core. And the more you do this, the, the better you get at picking them out. But you always want to uh, hit that pulse wave scanner over and over and over again because the first pulse wave typically will not reveal that it has a core. It's the second one when it changes color on you. Now see, there's something up here that looks interesting. Now, I have noticed too that there's, there's a strange, like something will glow really bright and then you'll hit it again and it, it won't show anything. It just disappears. You'll notice that I'm kind of zigzagging back and forth. It's just you, you can cover more ground, you get a bigger field of view. And you'll see, you know, there's a lot of them that are that will be the right brightness. Like these are all too dim, the, the ones that glow yellow. But they have to, not only do they have to be the right brightness, they have to be the right asteroid type. And it's the ones that look like a popped kernel of popcorn. At least that's how I would describe it. But now we're getting a kind of a long dry spell. You know, we found a, quite a few. And now I, I have to get to that next section. I think there might be one up here that's a candidate. There you go. Not quite. See, it's it doesn't quite have the... Oh, now it didn't glow at all. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, that's one. Look at that. See how it get, gets all those really dark black areas? That's got the core. And now it's changed color again. Yeah, I'll get a little closer. See what it does now. All right. We'll just take a look. I'm hoping this is void opals, not some other material. Oh, low temperature diamonds. Those are actually pretty good, but I'm not uh, I'm not wasting my time on them. Void opals are bust. One thing about having limpets out when they they'll shoot in front of you, and they'll they'll kill your pulse wave, so that's kind of annoying too. I wish they wouldn't do that. See now that might be one. That's nah, not. Oh, I'm gonna hit this asteroid. Oh, I didn't. Lucked out. Yeah, see. You see how the the dark follows the contours only and it doesn't get those really, really dark fissures? So that's not one. I guess I'm just trying to help describe what, what they look like so that it's easier for you guys when you go mining so you know what to look for. See, wrong shape. Sometimes just to change it up, I'll I'll fly through the belt instead of below it or above it. Um, there's I don't really see any advantage, but this is more fun because you got to zip in between the asteroids and such. All 
Alright, that might be one. See how bright it is? And hopefully if we get the dark black lines. Could be. That's what you're looking for. Come on, give me some green. Nah. I don't think it's gonna be one. But I'll I'll pop it anyways. Definitely not. Alright, you know what? Let's just look at no, no fishers. Alright. You know, guys, I'm, uh, I've got this tickle in my throat and I have this urge to cough and I don't want to, I don't want to keep making, making you guys listen to me cough. So let me, I'm just going to quick, uh, run and get something to drink. Um, I'll be right back. Thank you for, uh, being patient. It'll just be a couple of, couple of minutes here. Thanks. Thank you, thank you for being so patient while I went and got a drink. I I just uh, was choking way too much. So, all right, I'm back. And we're, I'm just continuing on the hunt for the Void Opal Cores. I just didn't want to keep coughing on you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Wrong shape. Well, that might be the right shape. There we go. Now we're talking. Give me some void opals. No low temperature diamonds, please. I'm in I'm in a void opal hot spot. That's not gonna be one. Darn it. It gets frustrating when you don't you get all these fakes all the time. That, I mean they're I really think the game developers de deliberately put them in to look almost exactly like it, just to annoy the heck out of miners, so that you can't you can't tell until you're up close. But that's all right, I guess, right? Wrong shape. It's a shame. Yeah, and you don't even have to look at any of them if they're the wrong shape. You just... It, it's just a complete waste of time. I've checked. They're always empty. The only ones that have anything are like these popcorn looking ones. But that's not one. up there. I just saw that. Wrong shape. Hopefully I won't crash into- Whoa, I just missed that asteroid. Did you see that? I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna end up crashing. So there's a few other games that uh, I tried. Um, let me see. Okay, so I have I bought Battlefield Five. I, I I'm a big fan of the of those shooters, but for some reason Battlefield Five doesn't resonate with me very well. Um, I'm not sure why, but okay, here here we got one. Um, 
so I don't play it that much, and uh, but they just released the new Firestorm mod, and uh, I have to say, it's pretty awesome. All right, Bromolite, do you see that? They are just killing me with these. That's two cores in a voidable hotspot. They were not void opals. So I I played the Firestorm, and I have to say it's a. If you if you play shooters, it's and if you've played PUBG before or Apex Legends or uh, Fortnite, um, I don't think it's anything like Fortnite, but I think it's like a kind of. It's less arcadey than Apex Legends, and less realistic and hardcore than PUBG. So it's kind of like this happy medium in between, and of course, I really like it. But anyways, um, you know, and, and like all of those, uh, <laughs> um, what are they, Battle Royale mode games, I'm terrible. I'm just, there we go. Terrible. And I don't know what it is. Well, the looting, I think they need to fix that. You're right. Um, but, you know, the way I play, I just, what, I kind of, I play a very hardcore mode. I just, whatever the first weapons I find, and then I don't loot anymore. And that's probably why I'm so terrible at the game, because I just, whatever I find immediately, because it's too much of a pain in the butt to to keep changing up my gear. So I just see how far I can get with the first, you know, two or three guns I can find. And uh, I, I will keep picking up um, uh, ammo. But, you know, I really don't know how to play, so... And I, I've i played it a few times, and I've made it into the top five a couple of times. And, uh, you know, just kind of running around and just being an idiot. And it, it seems to work out well for me. <laughs> I, I guess play to your strengths is, is what I'm saying. And playing like an idiot, that's... Uh, if I try to be serious about it, I get all... I get tense. So I just... Uh, I don't do it. I just... Uh, I don't play serious. Uh. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Alright, whatever. They gotta find a high... High strength. Let me see. Is this high strength here? Yeah. Usually two low strengths and it's ready to crack. But for some reason... Oh yeah, it's fun. And I, I mean, I almost made it to... I was in the top five and I had a guy... Because I don't know how to play... I, I had a guy... And he had no idea where I was. But I shot him... And then uh, a message flashed up on my screen. I thought I killed him, but no, it just said I broke his armor. And then he turned around and killed me. So, because I stopped shooting when I got the message. But, you know, that's that's how I roll. Alright, I lost my asteroid. Where is it? Oh, is it? There it is. Alright, I must have gone too far away. So let's detonate. Oh, too far. Well, that's right. We'll just stay right here and wait for it to detonate. It's only got 10 seconds to go. Oh yeah, that's what I'm liking. A little bit far away. I don't know what I was thinking flying that far away. I never do that. Alright. Alright, collectors, do your magic. Go. 
Oops. Get these guys. Before I move. Ah, oh, darn it. See how see how quickly they go out of range? Yeah, I can't even hit them. Spinning away from me again. Oh, got it. Lucky. Lucky shot. See, these are showing that I can hit them, but they're in these crevices, so you can't. It's a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna have to fly over to them. Right, these guys. So, yeah, so anyways. Like uh, Firestorm, I think it's a lot of fun, and um, you know, because it plays like Battlefield, so that's that's just really nice. It's a, it's very much more familiar to me than all the other systems, and like I, I just didn't like Fortnite at all because uh, I guess I'm uh, too uh, anti-building. I don't like all that construction you got to do. It's like, can I just shoot at things? <laughs> I just need a simpler game. try and get out of here because I'm taking damage keep crashing into things uh, lost my other limpet he got he crashed in he didn't go around come on so what are we at 71 72 tons very good oh there he went out and got it All right. so I'm gonna jettison some more of these limpets Do 15 more. That gives me some space. I love that. I totally love that storm. Uh, the noise that it makes. And I love, you know, because that's that really is a winning strategy for those Battle Royale games is you just you run the perimeter so that no one can come up behind you. And it's really great because... It makes it more intense because you can't hear footsteps. So you, you just randomly will come across people and you really have to use your uh, visuals. I don't know. I really I really did enjoy I, I played about four or five rounds. The first couple of rounds, yeah, I died instantly. Um, just because I was trying to figure out what the heck to do. And uh, also, you know, change gears to be able to... Uh, To be able to see targets in that game. I don't know how, you know, I think that's really, really my biggest drawback is they, uh, people that I play against and, that, and friends of mine, they can see the most minute movement and know that it's a person. Man, they have to literally run 10 feet in front of me, left to right, for me to see any movement at all. It, it, and if they're 200, 300 yards away and they're just a speck on my screen, I never see them. Uh, here, I think I got another one here. We're uh, we're getting close to filling up that cargo hold. Yeah, look at that. So the trick to successful hunting of these void opals, uh, the cores, is you got to find a system where there aren't a lot of people mining them. That's really the only thing. If the, if you get a lot of people mining them, they deplete really quickly, and then you go you go half an hour between cores. It's just insane. And usually, if if I go 15 minutes, I just leave that ring, or um, usually about 10 minutes. I I won't even go 15 anymore, because you can usually find a ring. Let me get ahead of this. 
that uh, you can usually find a ring that if if you can find one where nobody's in and nobody's been mining it and you get a void opal core or the hot spot void opal hot spot you'll get you'll hit so many cores in such a short period of time oh look at that I love it when that happens two There we go. I'm just, you know, I'm just backing out a little bit. And we'll detonate that. I love it when I don't have to put five in. Now you can see it's not quite perfect. It's a little on the low end. I guess if you, if you could then... It's, it's kind of like blackjack. You know, you, if you go over, you're done. All right. Looking good. So, um, the crate, this, I find that this is the ideal core mining ship for me. Um, now I haven't, I've, I've, uh, flown a bunch of other ships. Um, I might try, there's a couple others I would try. Um, I might even try one eventually with a much higher, uh, cargo capacity. Because, just to see, you know, if I, if I brought a cutter out here, you know, with 700, what, 760 tons worth of cargo space? Or, you know, it would probably be closer to 700 tons with all the other gear you have to carry. But, um, I mean, that's, you're talking almost a billion credits for a full cargo hold. I think, I think I want to try that. I think I want to be able to go and sell my stuff and make a billion credits. And now I'd have to mine, I mean, think... To fill that, you'd have to be out, because I can do 128 tons in about an hour and a half to two hours. So you're talking almost almost five hours of mining. I never play a game session that long, so it would be it would be several game sessions, and I think you would have to traverse several rings because you would you would seriously deplete them with. There we go. I'm just going to pull forward. That should help. And looking at... Okay, I have, one, I have 77 tons. Um, that's going to put me over 80 million right now. Close to 100 million in credits if I cash it in. But I'm going to keep going. I'm going to fill this baby. I think two more... Uh, probably three more cores it's going to take for me to fill the cargo hold. But it's looking mighty good. I mean, the, I mean, this is the way... To me, it's the... It's the easiest way to make money if, if you need to just go out and make some money. You might as well mine the cores. And I was looking at... <coughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, my, my son just recently started playing Rust. Um, which is also an open world survival game, but he didn't particularly care for it because it's a lot of PvP and uh... Well, oh, okay, so five billion. Yeah, my math is off um, five billion credits. Could you imagine you just go cash it in? But I mean th that's like three Almost four gaming sessions for me to fill up 700 cargo. That's... I don't know if I can... Fo but, I mean, five billion. Maybe I'll do it. I don't have a cutter yet. And so, actually, that's why I'm... Uh, so you can kind of see what my my thought process is. I don't, I don't have the Empire rank to get a cutter. So I, that's why I'm going to be doing the uh, rescue missions. Oh, what did I do? 
Of course, because... Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's a... Uh, but think of all the, the... I mean, five billion credits. If you did that... You know, you know what? That would be great to do as a wing. Because you could have so you could just follow along somebody finding all of that, and you can have helpers crack off the abrasion blasters and then let you just collect everything. And then uh, when you're full, then then they could fill up. I mean, I. I think that would be kind of cool. Alright, let me see. Looks like I might have one over there. There you go. Almost missed it. Oh, I'm going too fast. But as you can see, it's... Well, it's not too few and far between. But you have to find the right... Uh, bromelite. Uh, as soon as I say it's not too few and far between, they give me garbage. And typically I don't see a lot of variation in the cores, like... Um, I won't get a lot of bromelite or granditerite or any of those in a void opal core. I just get void opal cores, but... This system has been a little bit uh, different, and I don't know if they've kind of changed things, tweaked on the back end. It, I don't know if that would require, uh, you know, a client end update where they can kind of change up the percentages, spawn rates, I guess. I think that would be a server side thing, but who knows? I don't know. Every now and then, as I'm passing something, it'll it'll catch the corner of my eye, and I just don't ever want to leave one, you know, or fly right by one. Okay, now let me see. Might that be one? Oh, see, I, see, I hate when they do that. They usually. See, that's a... F I think that's a fake. Yep. Total fake. So, uh, F Major Fish, how has your, uh, gameplay been going? What have you been doing in Elite Dangerous? Have you been playing... See, does that look like it's got fissures? It might. I'm gonna just blast it. Oh. You get these dry patches, you just gotta blast through them. Yeah, 
out. Just nothing. I mean, look at that. It's dried up on me. So when I uh, went, I took a little vacation to San Francisco, um, and I've been before, but it's been a, it's been quite a while, and my kids have never been. And you know, it's a great city. There's tons to do and tons to see and lots of fun. Um, so one of the things we did was we drove down um, Lombard Street, and that was you know that's the really twisty road. And uh, my kids were out of their minds. Because, one, we live in Phoenix, so everything is so flat out here. And you can't get any more opposite of that than San Francisco. And so we, they really enjoyed doing that. And then we did, of course, you know, you do the Golden Gate Bridge. They wa walked across that. Totally loved it. Um, you know, terrifying, but still absolutely awesome. And then I think, oh, we went and to the, the John Muir Woods, the Redwood Forest, which is just beautiful. I uh, highly recommend it. And um, I'm trying to think of a day at the beach, but you know, San Francisco this time of year is cold, so there was no going in the ocean or anything like that. So a couple of months too early, but it was fun and you know, so we did the tourist stuff, and I mean, every day was packed. We oh, we went to Alcatraz, took the kids to Alcatraz, and I had never been. You know, I've been to San Francisco a lot, but I'd never been to Alcatraz. And I highly recommend the tour if you're in any way interested in any of that at all. It was really pretty fantastic. Going into the cells and the the whole, you know. If you've ever seen the movie, the Clint Eastwood movie, I mean, holy cow. I was just like, this is absolutely amazing. So, and the tour is great. They have a guided tour that, you know, where you can listen or you can actually, they have uh, tour guides that you can um, have them, you know, a live person instead of a tape recording. We just did the recording, the recorded tour, and it was actually really good. It was produced quite well. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, the ferry ride was great. Um, you know, everything about it is, it was so out, out of my kids' normal everyday experience. And, uh, it was really nice to have them, uh, just get, you know, basically get their minds blown with how different places are, you know, even here only in the United States, it, uh, and they're much more well traveled than I was um, as a kid. I didn't go anywhere, but I think it was also the the generation. You know, there was travel was was a, a, a much more of a luxury back then. And you know, I do a lot of travel for business, and um, so it's it's just more of a necessity. And and you know, we I would take my kids with me, and you know, and we've done a lot more vacationing because we've been fortunate to be able to. And uh, I mean, we used to even do it on the cheap, just we would, you know, because we didn't have um, the budget for, you know, extravagant. But we live in a we we live in a place where we're very close to a lot of really cool stuff. So we would do a lot of budget vacations. Hey there, magic. Welcome. And uh, so we just, uh, a little too far away. Um, it was, it was a great trip and, uh, you know, and, but it also, everything went kind of sideways because the day before we were leaving, 
our uh, flight got our, our flights got canceled, all of them because you know how they they've grounded all the. Why am I not getting my? Uh, I'm gonna just. I'm just gonna have to wait. It's not letting me detonate them. See, no contacts in range. That doesn't make any sense. I can see it right there. Anyway, it looks like my game kind of glitched. So hopefully this will detonate. I'm gonna back up. It's about 14 seconds. Detonation in 10 seconds. There we go. Very good. So, uh, if you've never been to San Francisco, I highly recommend. It's a fun city. Uh, if you like uh, kind of like the urban, multicultural thing, um, which I do. I mean, I can't get enough of it. I grew up in Chicago, so it's uh, it definitely feels very, very much like how I grew up. Um, all right, so let's... Uh, get the rest of these guys taken care of here and then make some money come on now don't be stubborn but it was uh you know, it's like we, it was one of those vacations where you just do a ton of stuff all the time. And when you get back from your vacation, you're flipping exhausted. I mean, I was just so tired. And so, it, I mean, it really did take me a week to kind of decompress. But it was fun. I mean, and my kids are good. They don't, uh, they're not complainers. And they're pretty adventurous and they like to do new stuff. So that makes it really easy. Um, uh, well, it's nice that they they really do have uh, very similar personalities to uh, uh, me and my wife. We're we're both that way, and I think you know if you grow up used to it, it which you know we just it was travel was just kind of a normal thing. Um, all right. Anyways, enough of my vacation, you guys. Anyone got any vacations planned? Thinking of doing anything fun uh, coming up this summer? Um, I'd love to hear about it. Um, I think, uh, like, I always do kind of like a, a West Coast summer thing. Um, I lost all my limpets again. Um, I'm, I'm an oceanaholic. I love the ocean. Can't get enough of it. So, and I've We've been taking, I've been, yeah, a family vacation. We've been taking, uh, you know, somewhere in the San Diego area. <laughs> we do that uh, once a year at least. Um, sometimes if we can swing it, we'll get this, you know, that second time in. But, you know, depends. Yeah. It takes a lot, a lot of effort. Kids are in sports and school and, you know, and they have stuff they want to do. But we tr try to make it a priority. All right, let me just make sure. That, okay, I'm clear underneath. That's right. You, one of the things you want to do, because I, I tend to lose a lot of limpets. I would always, what I would do is park my ship right above this. You see this big asteroid over here to my right? This one right here? I would like park my um, ship right above that. And, you know, my limpets would keep trying to deliver to me and they would just fly right into it. So... Anyways, all right, so let me see. Cargo, all right, so we're at 94. I think... I think I'm going to go one one more asteroid, and then I'm going to go... I think it's time to be uh, rescuing. I'm going to rescue some refugees. I'm going to look for a burning station. <coughs> I'm going to switch ships. I have a, a beluga that has... Pa I'm going to do the what, economy passenger cabins on the thing. And uh, I haven't done anything with it yet, so. 
Alright. Oh, where are you at? Where are you at, guys? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit closer to those limpets, I think. Oh, I'm hitting asteroids. There we go. Alright. Just a few more. Might hit a hundred tons. I, you know what? Uh, that will put me over because I think I. What am I at? Nine hundred. I. I just wanted to. I wanted to get over a billion, and that'll put me over a billion easily. So, let me just jettison some limpets here so that these guys can deliver what they got. go all right so what do I got a hundred hundred three tons all right that's enough that's enough mining for today let me jettison the rest of my limpets because I don't need them good and we're heading out we're heading back home all right not home. <laughs> let, let me just get into Super Cruise real quick. And then I, I, what I, I have to do is you have to find a place where you can deliver um, these opals for the like the maximum amount of credits. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and let me just pull up. I use Inara. Inara.cz. <coughs> Sorry. I have allergies, uh, seasonal allergies, and here in Phoenix, they are killing me right now. Alright, so what happened to Inara? You are gone. Alright, so I have to reopen it. Give me a sec. <coughs> I'll show you what I'm doing here in a sec. Let me uh, let me just get to the right page, and then um, all right. Hmm. All right, let me check my let me check check my system real quick because it's telling me there's nothing within range and that's not right. So I'm in. I just have to manually key it in. Give me a second. Oh, wait, best cell. There we go. Okay. Okay, that's where I'm going. Okay. <clears throat> now that I have it sorted, let me just show you what I'm doing real quick. Um, where are you at? I'm looking for Inara. Okay. So here's Inara. So it's Inara.cz. And basically what you want to do is you click on Galaxy. And then in the left panel, you're going to get a menu. You want to click on Commodities. And it'll take you to the Common Commodities page. And then... You want to go to minerals and then click on void opals. And if you're logged in, like I'm logged in, see it knows I'm commander very dead. It knows where you're at. And so it will then, when you go to the best sell price, it will, and if you're not logged in, if you don't have an account, you can just punch in the system you're in right here and click search. And then it will tell you the best prices you can get. You know, I have it sorted by price over here and what distance they are away from you and how many light seconds in, um, the the station is so I'm gonna go here this is it doesn't give you the best but look it was updated three minutes ago and they're 1.6 like 1.66 million per um, ton and that is not very far off the absolute maximum and th and it's really close to me so I'm gonna go to the galaxy map and we're just gonna punch it in 
There it is. And... Oh, here, I gotta get rid of the... Uh, let me get rid of that Inara off the screen. Sorry, guys. All right, so I'm in my galaxy map, and this is where I'm going. This, uh, no, that's not it. This is not it. This is the wrong system, so let me go back. I must have clicked the wrong. I'm Sham. Oh, there it is. Uberath. I, I just didn't see it. Sorry. <clears throat> and now you're getting an insight into basically what happens to me every time I play this game. I miss obvious things constantly. All right, so we're just going to fly around the rings. All right. And so we're on our way. It's two jumps, I think. Yeah, two jumps. Hopefully I won't get interdicted. If if I do, you know, the, the thing is you want to have a fast ship when you're uh, core mining because you, you, you can scroll through that asteroid belt really quickly. But the other thing that it is important is if you have to jump quite a ways, you can outrun any interdictions. Um, this this ship boosts at like 525, uh, what is it, meters per second. Oh, oh no! There we go, for some reason it was, uh... oh I see, oh yeah, see, you see, I've got somebody trying to interdict me. E. Yep. He's going to get behind me. That's okay, because what I will do is you just submit to the interdiction. Let's see if I can get away. So this actually works out really good. You get to see something different. And you just boost away. And look, he, he didn't even get a shot off on me. And then I'm just going to high wake. But I just try and keep him behind me. And he just can't catch me. And can't get... He's, I'm out of weapons range, so we're all good. That's the way you do it. That's textbook. I probably would have high waked sooner. Um... But I was talking, and you know me. Can't do two things at once. Alright, so here we are. This is the Crate Mark II. Um, here, let me see if I can do it real quick. Give me a sec. I'll post the link to Cor. Oh no! Hang on a second. Let me post the link to Coriolis. Let me find it. Uh, give me a sec. I'm going a little too fast here. All right. Let me just throttle back so I don't overshoot. And then, all right. Let me post the link to my ship. I. It has all of the. Uh, the specs of the ship so you can kind of look it up all right that's it's kitted out fully for um deep core mining or the uh asteroid core mining and it's highly effective at what it does it's excellent um i'm engineered i have i think it's grade four dirty drag drives on this thing so it's fast uh, i i haven't gone all the way to grade five i, th I thought it was fast enough <laughs> Oh, and let me, that's just the Coriolis making those weird noises. I'll close it in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, Crate Mark II, I found it's one of my favorites. It's just a good, it's a fast, maneuverable ship, so you can, if you want to fly in the asteroids, you can, and you don't run the risk. It can hold 128 tons of cargo, which I find is ideal for about the amount of time that I like to play a single gaming session. About an hour to an hour and 40 minutes is usually all I play, and I can fill it up and then deliver my cargo in that, in that time. Uh, 
And so in a gaming session, I can make 210 million credits and call it a call it a day. Um, So after this, uh, after I drop this off, and we should crack a billion credits here, um, then what I'm going to do is head back to my home base, which is the Diagondry system, and um, that's where I keep all my ships stored. Yeah. So this is the, uh, I always like doing this. Go down to minerals, confirm the price here. Void opals, 1.658 million. I have 103 tons, time to sell. Hundred seventy million. Cold hard cash. If I if I had gone all the way to 128 tons, uh, it would have been about 210 million. We just confirm the sale, and there you go. 1.1 billion. We're all golden. That's what I like to see. So now I have plenty of cash. I can just fly recklessly, do whatever the hell I want, um, and not have to worry about it. Oh, and I also got a message because uh, when you when you dump in that. Um, that kind of cash you get allied so my reputation has changed and I'm now friendly I'm now cordial and I'm not cordial so so three of the factions have raised me up because of all the the um, materials that I'm I'm selling there uh, trading with them all right very good time to Head back to Diagondry. So we go here, home sweet home. All right, make sure, make sure I don't have any cargo. Don't want to ever leave any in there. All right, looking good. That's that's a nice balance, isn't it? One point one billion. Um, Gonna definitely have to try it in a cutter when I can unlock it, because I would love to just sell and make uh, make five billion in one run. Holy cow, that would be awesome! All right, feels good to be making bank. Yes, it does. All right, so heading back to home. And then I'm just going to switch ships, and I probably will have to. I don't think I have it kitted out for uh, my uh, belugas not not ready for uh, refugee missions. So This dude needs to move his fat ship. Hey, you know, that's how it goes. <clears throat> I find that it... It always pays for me to just not... Just assume I did my math wrong. Because it's the time that I assume I did it right and I, I'm really sure of it. That's the time I get it wrong. So, you know. That's right. Yeah, it, it's close to a billion. I I was thinking. Now there are cer certain certain uh, power play factions where you can, if you if you become their top level uh, operative, whatever it is, the highest rank for power play, it like doubles how much you make for trade. So, you know, you could just by doing a little power play. You could turn that one billion into two. Um, in fact, I'm gonna I'm doing that with Leong Ri. 
for my exploration data if you become a top rank explorer with him um, you get a a hundred percent they basically double your payouts for ex exploration data so of course you know I've in my other account I have a ton uh, billions already so I'll when I fly back in I'm gonna get I'll, I'll do some uh, power play missions to rank up all the way to uh, maximum I'm already aligned with him so it's just I'll just have to run in in one of my ships that can I'll, I have a cutter in my other account for 750 tons or whatever uh, you, you do 10 missions and all of a sudden you're top ranked and then you, then you fly back and sell all your exploration data and basically double your profit for the same amount of work and there power play is good for a lot of things like that there's certain ones double your trade um, you get more for combat for others so it might pay uh, or, or be worth your time to look through uh, the problem with power play is that you kind of got to pick and choose because in order to get access to those perks you have to be aligned for four weeks um, so you get aligned and then hasta la vista for a month and then at the end of that month go back then run all your missions you get all your merits and then go do what you need to do so and you know it, it pays to stay aligned like I like uh, Liang Ri because he gives nice discounts on everything so I spend less credits on uh, buying ships it's a I think like a 15% discount so um, I'm I, with the amount of stuff that I buy in this game I've saved billions Absolutely. Alright, heading on back to Ray Gateway. This is where I made my home. <clears throat> this is my home system. If you haven't uh, given yourself a home system, I highly recommend it. It organizes where you keep all your ships. Uh, it makes playing just a little bit more consistent you don't have to be constantly tr transferring ships and waiting uh, it's usually easier no matter where you are in the bubble to just quick fly back if you want to switch ships uh, then transferring it usually I mean there are places that it takes hours for your ship to transfer and it costs you know it costs a lot of credits so if you have a decent jump range with your ship it just pays to have a home base and especially if you have a lot of ships. I have, I think in this account, I have two accounts. One I use for exploration pretty much almost exclusively um, at this point. And uh, the other one is this one, which I use for everything else. And in this account, I have uh, 35 ships right now. So to have them consolidated into one place is really kind of nice. It makes everything easier. Because I just know where my ships are. I don't have to go, oh, where's my ship? Where did I leave it? Where are my modules? I transfer all my modules. They're all here. All my stored modules are here. So I just know. Want to change a ship? Head back home. And uh, and so that's it, it just makes it easier. So I again, I recommend it if you're just kind of haphazardly. And it doesn't have to be the same system. The way I chose this one, it was a discounted system. It's adjacent to a lot of other systems that have stuff that I need like it, there's a uh, one jump away there's interstellar factors another one jump away there's a material trader that's different than the material trader here um, there with uh, one jump away there basically I can get pretty much every one or two jumps away every ship in the game so um, you know choose Choose for convenience. That's usually my my method. Um, but there's a ton of different systems. You know, if you're like I think this one is independent, but you know, you, you could you could choose Empire, Federation, Alliance, whatever. And 
I haven't, uh, I just happen to be, um, playing power play with Leon Ri. Um, because, uh, he's the one that gives the pack hound missiles. And uh, I wanted them. Alright, so we're just gonna go dock. Time to get big beluga. Alright, so we're pad 35. I'm going a little too fast. Come on. Right, sorry about that. Kind of fat fingered my controls there. It's going a little too quick coming in. So I deserve that warning for sure. Alright. Okay. So. We, uh. Got all our credits. Now I'm gonna do some. Uh, basically, I'm gonna get some Empire rank here. So, what I'm gonna do is head to my shipyard. And. Alright, so I've got. I actually have 36 ships. I've got 35 stored plus the one I have. Um, and some of them are duplicates. I think I have like four Sidewinders. Um, just because they're of sentimental value. They were the ships I started with, and I just keep them. You know, why not? They're Sidewinders. So. What I'm looking for is, um, so there's my vet. I use this for doing um, assassination missions and, and so on and so forth. It's partially engineered. Um, this one is, you know, it's the it's basically the missile rack, the mobile missile rack. And uh, Anaconda that I use to jump, it's got, you know, I mean, 80, 82 light years unlaid and 81 light year jump. That's that's just all right. Here's this is my uh, my beluga. This is what I'm using. Let's see how it's kitted right now. So it doesn't really have. I've got cargo and vehicle hanger and uh, I don't know what I was doing in this, but we're gonna put uh, we're gonna use it. Use this ship and the next step is. Uh, Going to have to put some economy passenger cabins in it. And uh, maybe lower the shields and put some heat sinks on. Uh. Okay. Oh, you know what it is today? It is Taco Tuesday! And yes, I... Try to make it a point at least once a month to celebrate Taco Tuesday. Um, tacos are a human being's perfect food. Uh, in case you were wondering why I celebrate Taco Tuesday. Um, they can taste like anything. You can put anything in them. They're perfectly handheld so your hands always stay clean. You don't need utensils. It's just amazing. Anyways, they can be spicy enough to blow your head off or savory or sweet. You can do sweet tacos with, you know, like a mango salsa. I mean, it's just, come on, guys, they're tacos. So anyways, I highly recommend if you weren't going to eat tacos today and you're around any place that has good Mexican food, go get tacos today. And uh, believe me, your body will thank you. All right. So let me go to Starport Services. We're going to go to Outfitting. Look at, isn't that a beautiful ship? Come on, guys. Look at that custom paint job. It's just people just want to fly with me because they're like, oh, you know what? We were going to travel with that guy, but look at that ship. We're, we're traveling with him. That's right. All right. So hard points. Got nothing. Utility mounts. Got heat sinks. I'm going to throw, a, you know what? I'm going to get rid of these stock heat sinks because ladies and gentlemen, I have engineered heat sinks that's right engineered heat sinks this one is what it should I have back ammo capacity come on it gives me one extra heat sink so transfer that to ship yes engineered heat sinks I am that guy 
<laughs> yes, it's my. All right, ammo capacity, ammo capacity. Oh, and I got. I have lightweight ones, um, but I'm I'm looking for. I need. I need more capacity. Because you're gonna, you have to pop a lot of heat sinks, and if you have trouble getting out of these stations, you don't want to run out because your temperature will get really high. All right, so we've got another one. Let me see. I think lightweight, lightweight. We're gonna go ammo capacity, and then I think that's the only ones I I don't have anymore with ammo capacity. Let me just see. Lightweight, lightweight. All right, and I'm gonna quick. Oh, we go back. Okay, so now that's nine heat sinks I can pop instead of six. So it's uh, that's excellent. All right, core internals. This is uh, this is not an engineered ship. Look, a low, you know, f underrated power plant, but it's a D thrusters, a long range FSD, uh, life support. Let me see if I can engineer this to because look at it, it's sixty four tons. Hang on, let me. Let me check my sensors. Sensors are only eight tons, but yeah, life support. Man, that's a waste. So I'm gonna see if I can engineer those. I'm not changing anything. We're gonna leave that all the same. Oh wait a minute. Let me check. Do I have a engineered FSD? No, I don't. Okay. All right. So. Very much empty. I've got a, a big shield generator on this thing. Um, doesn't really need it. I might just switch to a, a lower rated one. Let me see if I can... I'm going to store this. Right here. I'll sell it. Don't need a big shield generator when you're doing these missions. And then let me see. Uh, I think I can do a... If I do a four... Oh, and I don't need the... Vehicle hanger. I'm going to just sell that. Oh, you know what? I think I was using this to, <laughs> to explore and gather materials. It was just fun flying around in it. It really was. All right, I'm going to sell. Well, I'll keep the cargo. cargo. I'll keep one cargo rack. And I think I'm going to put a bigger FSD booster in this baby. So let me store this one because I want a little bit longer range. Transfer. We're going to store that. And, okay, so now we're pretty much empty. I've got the big fuel scoop. You need that. Now, this is going to be, let me get a shield generator real quick. I I think I can do a four. I, I don't think I can. Let me just see. Browse shop. Will it give me a shield generator? Oh, I can do a four. Let me see. Oh, no. It's under. Okay, so I can't. Do a five. Here, let me do this. I'll do a FSD booster. 5H, because that's going to put me just under 40 light years, so it, it'll it be easier to get to where I'm going. When I get there, I'll sell it. Because then I can uh, put another passenger cabin in. So, all right. So let me see. If, a, if I go a shield generator, I got to do a 5. Let's see if I can even... Shield generator. Okay, so I can do a 5. And I'm going to do a 5D. Because you're not going to need massive shields. And before I buy it, hang on a second. I, you know, this, I always forget to do this because I have a bunch of stuff in storage. Let me see if I. I have a five shield generator. I might have one. No, doesn't look like it. All right. So it's always worth a try. Um, so I'll just go buy it now. That's the way you got to do it. You know, it's, but I, I usually only keep, um, stored, you know, or engineered modules in my storage. And I don't, I try to sell off all the other junk. All right. So now we've got just under 40 light years. It's going to come down here in a second. Cause I'm going to, let's see, we want... Where are you? 
passenger cabins. We want the 6E economy holds 32. That's the that's the one we want. Because remember, we're just this is basically going to be a refugee ship. And what I'm going to do, I'll show you. Hmm. I'm going to get rid of that big fuel scoop too. I don't think I need it. That's only if you're traveling long distances. And I, I, I'll keep it until I get near my... All right, so there we go. So again, you want to be able to carry as many passengers as you can. So, all right. So again, when I get to where I'm going, I'm getting rid of the shield. I'll keep the shields. Maybe uh, I'll get rid of this, and uh, so I'll have another uh, five slot for passengers. Hmm. You know, this thing has a massive fuel tank, so I might be able to get by without having a fuel scoop. I'm going to get rid of that cargo rack. I don't need it. I could use the extra passenger space. I'm not hauling cargo, I'm hauling people. There we go. Alright. So. Fuel scoop. Yeah, I don't really think I need the fuel scoop. So I'm just gonna... I am actually gonna store that. Because... Oh, it's a 6B? No, I'm just gonna sell it. There, we'll just... I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, I do this so many times you think I would be able to figure it out. So it's 6E, economy, other 32, and nice. All right, so we've got some serious passenger capacity now. Let me see. Oh, I got another empty here. So economy, 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 economy. And I can, I'm going to get rid of this when I get there. And then one, two, three, four. All right. So we, we're, we're good. So let's take a look. Inventory. Cabins. I mean... We're good. So nice. All right. <clears throat> now, the next step is we have to find... We're going to go to the galaxy map. And we're going to have to filter... For Empire Systems. So we're going to go here. And we're going to... It's going to be... Allegiance. It's going to be just the Empire. I only want to see Empire. And I only want to see the Empire stations that are on fire. So let's take a look. That looks like that one is. That's 94 light years. 
Let me zoom out. Oh, there's some there's some others that are closer. Are these Empire? No. No. So only the one? Are you kidding me? Looks like it. Only Camulus. Looks like the Empire has escaped the clutches of uh, the Thargoid Horde. Because, I mean, do you see any other... I don't see any other stars, so all right. So that's that's our one choice. We're heading to Camulus, and it looks like it's been attacked and it's on fire. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do, real quick, before I fly all the way to Camulus, I'm going to get within like one. Well, here, let me let me exit out. Oh, it's three jumps. Please, I'm going to get rid of. Uh, Oh, I already got rid of it. Never mind. So let me... I just want to see. I'm going to go into uh, Elite Dangerous Database real quick. Let me... <clears throat> I'll put it up on the screen once I get it loaded here. All right, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do, let me get that up on the screen for you. All right, so here's Elite Dangerous Database. All right, what I'm looking for is stations that have passenger 5E. Passenger cabin near Camulus. See, this is just a little pre planning. And then I'm going to find the stations. Okay, so the rescue ship that's in Camulus has what I need. And it's 39 light seconds in. So that's, we're just going to head over there. Then I'm going to, ch I'll, I'll store the FSD booster. I'll get another uh, passenger cabin and then we will. Do some serious rescue missions. All right, very good. We're we're good to go. So three jumps. We're on our way. Oh, let me get rid of uh, Inara or the EDDB off the screen. Okay. So what I'm doing now? This is uh, this is. Twofold. One, I'm going to rescue a lot of refugees, save a lot of lives, and I think you know I need to do that to balance out from the previous stream I did where I was committing crimes. Yeah, observe this. I'm the biggest ship coming out. They need to observe my minimum distance. Look at this guy. Tell you the lack of respect. I'm flying a damn beluga. Get out of my way. Won't need a fuel scoop. Oh, what I wanted to, when I jump, I'll. I just think this ship is just beautiful looking, majestic. The, it's that paint job. It's it's just great. And, you know, I always get those scans because, hey, it's free money. It really is. So I always do that. Just kind of honk the system. All right, 
two jumps. So besides um, gaming, I also um, am a beginning guitarist. I, I've been playing for about five months. Um, I never really did anything musical before, so but it's always something I've been interested in. And as a kid, the opportunity, well, the opportunity was there. I was just a shiftless kid. I mean, if you're going to be honest. And I just, I was like, oh, that sounds like too much work. I'm not doing that. And, uh, but I, but I was always interested. I, you know, I like, uh, like playing, I like guitar in general. I love listening to it. And I, there were, I just wanted to learn how to play. So I earlier, about probably November of last year, just for Christmas, I bought a guitar, electric guitar. I like, I want to play electric guitar. And, uh, and I've been pretty much, I practice almost every day, a minimum of a half hour every day. Um, some, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll practice for three hours um, over the course of a day, maybe not all at once. You know, I don't, I rarely get a three hour block of time where I can do anything. Okay, so let me just real quick, I'll get back to that in a second. I'm looking for uh, this rescue ship. I think it's called Gautier de Varenne. Is that it? Let me just quick look. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well, hopefully they have what I need. So we're going to we're going to dock at the rescue ship first. Um and then I'll go do uh, pick up some passengers cuz that way if I, you know, do something stupid and crash in the um when I'm trying to dock that way I'm not sent all the way back to where I just was. I'll, I'll end up back at the rescue ship. So that's also a, that's kind of a thing that you should always do. Like if you're going into a system and you've, you've done like five or six jumps to get there and your, your purpose is to do combat, dock at a station before you go do your combat. Because if you die, um, you're going to end up five or six jumps away where if you dock at the station, it'll put you, you'll still be in the same system. So, you know, learn from my mistakes <laughs> is basically what it is. So anyways, back to, I don't know what I, guitar, what I was talking about. Um, I'm, I'm making actually really good progress. And in five months I've gone, basically I, I went from not even being able to figure out how to put my strap on the guitar when I got it to, I can play songs. Um, not perfectly, obviously. My technique has still got a lot of work ahead of it, but um, things have cleaned up. It's recognizable. Uh, to somebody who can't play guitar, it sounds pretty good. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, the, the I'm still in the very, very beginning stages, but I enjoy it so much. <laughs> what, I, what I'm getting to is there's this great software out there. It's called uh, uh, Bias FX. And basically what it is, is um, it either turns your desktop computer or your um, iPhone or iPad into uh, an amazing um, high-end amp system. And, uh, and, and it simulates all kinds of different tones and amps. And, you know, tones, that's just the sound that the guitar makes in case you're not familiar. But so, like, if... If you want it to sound like an acoustic, you can do that. If you want to sound it like, um, you know, your favorite band, you can find a tone and you just click it on and it changes the sound of your guitar. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Well, they just released a new, uh, it's called Bias FX2. And what it does is it also then can simulate other guitars, like other physical guitars. 
that have a very distinctive sound. So you can take, if you have a guitar of a very specific type, and maybe you you don't have um, the right kind of pickups. That's the that's the the little magnetic thing that picks up the sound from the strings, and different types of pickups just sound differently. And let's say you have one that sounds like a good, um, clean, uh, kind of blues sound, and it can, uh, and you have another one that can do kind of a, a nice uh, lead tone. Well, what if you, your and your guitar doesn't have a humbucker or anything like that, which is typically what you would use for. Um, uh, like a metal and that kind of stuff. You can just basically change, just through the software, change your guitar to sound like a totally different, different hardware. It's amazing what they can do now. So I'm thinking I'm gonna actually plunk down the cash to buy that, uh, just because it's so much fun to play all these songs that you know that are been my favorite songs for all my life. Like I love being able to play AC/DC or Megadeth or. Um, uh, even like Joe Walsh, I mean, come on, amazing, amazing guitars. So, you know, my interests are wide ranging in guitar. And uh, anyways, I just wanted to share my excitement that I'm probably going to be buying this cool new software. Anyways, uh, nerd attack over. All right. So here we are at, uh, we're going to go to outfitting. I'm going to see if I can get rid of my um, FSD booster. I think I'm just going to store it here. And uh, and I'm, what I want to do is throw on some one more passenger cabin. And then I'm going to go re rescue some, some passengers. And if you take a look before we get... Oh, hey, let, me, let me just go to outfitting real quick. We'll just wait for it. Oh. Just love that ship. All right, so optional internals. We're going to store the FSD booster. And hopefully we have... They'll have a... Passenger cabin economy. There we go. 32 more passengers. No waiting. All right. Now what I'm thinking of doing is let me just check and see if they have a shield generator. Because I'm gonna get rid of this five. Oh, they do. They have a. Oh, I see. I can't get rid of the five. I either have to go without shields, but the five is because the beluga is so big. I can't go with a smaller shield. So all right, that's just the way we go. I'm not flying this thing without shields because holy cow, it's a pig. It it drifts and slides and does all kinds of nasty stuff. All right. So now let's take a look. We're gonna get out of here. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. Remote workshop. Here we go. This is this is why you want to you pin blueprints. I want to see if I can lightweight. Oh, I'm gonna go back. I want to lightweight my life support on this baby. Let's see. Do I have? Oh yeah, I can. I can engineer it. So we're gonna do quick quick engineering. Spot engineering on this guy. All right. So it just went from 64 tons to 35 tons. Now, so again, look at. It. It's gonna make my ship. Either it'll give me a, a little bit more uh, turning ability, maneuverability, or it will give me more jump range. Oh. oh, so that's it. That's all I can do. Oh, look at that. I don't have conductive ceramics. That's a bummer. Look at I can do grade four. I've got 54 of those. So, all right. Not bad. Let me see if I can uh, or do my sensors. Let's see if I can engineer those. Oh, I can. I can do at least... And th this is lightweight I'm engineering here. So just, these are all of little efficiency things you should try. Pin, like you should always, if you have access to lightweight scanner for your sensors um, or uh, for your life support, those are ones you're always gonna use. I mean, I always use them and pretty much every ship I have I'm, I'm going to lightweight them. Oh, that's it. And so I, you notice a, a theme here. The grade three, I don't have enough of. Grade four, I've got tons of, and I don't have any. Pro, yeah, see, these are proto radiolic alloys are tough to come by. So, all right. So let me just, I, I was able to lightweight a little. Let's see if I can uh, dirty drive, drag drive. Oh, look at that. I can, I can give myself a little bit more speed. Do I have grade two? 
Yes, we have a winner. And I also think it's kind of fun. It's like winning the lottery if you... Let's see how high I can go. Oh. Oh, I do have some grade threes. <laughs> Why do you want me to say that? What's up, magic? All right, so let me, okay, so I, I was able to make it to grade four. How do I not have any selenium? What is wrong with me? And ph pharmaceutical isolators. Guys, I'm just going to tell you right now, pharmaceutical isolators, they're the worst. <laughs> All right. No more asking me to do stuff. What do you think I am? Some sort of a pet? All right. Well, anyways, here we go. Um, all right. So I did minor engineering. I didn't... didn't I didn't think I was going to have a ton, but, you know, it gives you a little bit of extra. All right, so now we're going to take a look at our navigation panel. And I, what was the name of the place that was burning? I think uh, it should show, right? I guess not. Oh, I guess it's this, huh? The Gautier de Varenne. All right, I think that's it. Let me let me just check the galaxy map real quick. I want to see what's what's what. Let's see if that's the right station. Yeah, that's the guy. That's the burning station. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go rescue some passengers, shall we? Um, you always want heat sinks for these type of missions because it's hot inside the station, and you'll start taking heat damage otherwise. And uh, you just don't want to be doing that. Oh yeah, I got just that little bit of engineering with the dirty drives. That's really boosted the speed on this thing quite a bit. Alright, so we're... We're still past that. Alright, so this is going to be a quick trip. Let me see, I'm trying to find the opening. Oh, there it is. It is. So we'll just kind of zip around here real quick. All right. I guess that wasn't it. Let's see where it's at. There it is. All right. That's right. I like to live dangerously. They don't call it Elite Dangerous for nothing. Alright. Time to rescue some passengers. They're all in a world of hurt. Let me just request docking real quick. <laughs> Alright, so... Let's go a little. Landing pad 39. Holy cow, this place is a mess. Those Thargoids, they sure do know how to throw a party, don't they? Alright, let me slow. Slow it down. Uh oh, I'm stuck! So I'm steadily gaining heat, but this ship is not a, it's not, it doesn't run very high. Yeah, 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 I don't think I need to do anything about it. 
Oh, I do. I pop a heat sink. There we go. <laughs> Darn it! All right, so we're going to go to um, the mission board. Why are there no missions? Aren't there supposed to be refugees? Hmm. All right, what's the deal? What's the deal? All right, hang on a second. That doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, that's why it's passenger, passenger lounge. Yeah, come on. There we go. See, now you got, look at all these refugees want out. And so what you do is, these guys that aren't aligned with the um, Empire, they're shit out of luck. I'm not saving them, sorry. They can, uh, those factions can just burn. But again, what you're looking for is the higher rep. So three, I think at most is you're going to get is three, because I'm not affiliated with any of these guys yet. But I'm going to take all of them if I can. Yeah. And uh, these influence ones, no. We just want rep. So, accept. Rep. And I'm just doing this for reputation. And, uh, and it's to get, um, Empire rank. Oh, all right, so I've got those missions. Now we got. Don't want that one. You're just gonna skip it. Cause you only want to take the missions that give you reputation. All right. Well, that's a big one. And then no, no, no. Okay, this one, yes. And then this guy, yes. And they're very low paying at this point because I am not... Um, oh. Yeah, I'm not um, allied with any of these guys. Okay, so influence, influence. We're going to skip that. Now we go this guy. And we got rep. And what is that? Rep. Rep. All right. So these guys are out of luck. But now th there's no more missions. There's no contracts here available. None here. Okay, and there's no more. So then what I'm going to do, now what you do is you round it out. And now you're going to take the ones that give the best um, uh, kind of engineering thing. So that one takes specialized legacy firmware is a good one that I always use. Um, I think it is. Anyways, it's a, oh no, that's not it. Grade one. All right, so I'm going to decline that. I thought that was a better one. Let me see about this guy. Oh, you know, I think I'm only going to get grade one stuff anyway, so that's all right. I'll just accept it. And so th this is another way that I get materials that I need. Um, Because, you know, then you, you get that data. All right, so uh, let me see. What else? I got zero, zero. Okay, I can t there's a two refugees. Articulation orders. I'll just take them. All right. All right, so. Oh, capacity exceeded. Back. Hmm. It says I, I only have one left, so. All right. 
Alright, so we're full up. We're gonna go take it to the rescue ship. Let me just mark that target real quick. Okay, and before we go, my, um... Empire rank is barren at 79%, and I'm 79% friendly, so that should start going up. Both, both of those. Alright. This thing is so hard to pilot for me, it's so big, I always catch those tail fins, I catch them... Temperature critical. Critical heat levels. There we go. That'll just keep me cool enough until I get out. Alright, we're out. I can't remember what the what rank I need. I'll look it up if if you guys don't know. What rank do you need to get a cutter from the Empire? Okay, it's twelve ten. Uh, but I'm in a local time. I'm in a, probably about twelve thirty. That that's gonna end the stream for me today because I am really getting hungry and all I'm thinking about is tacos. I'm just, just I can't get them off my mind. Oh, too fast. And here we go. That's, see, that's a real quick trip back and forth. Excellent. Landing pad one. Don't know where you're at, landing pad one. Up by the front, I would think. There you are. All right. So let's see how many we can save here. Stock refuel, because you're gonna you you are definitely gonna pop some heat sinks. All right, so we're gonna take the reputation. Take the reputation. Yeah, that's right. Rep will just go up. And we're not looking to make money here. We're just we're looking to make uh, Federation or I mean Empire rank. Um, the money I made was earlier in the stream uh, doing the core mining, and uh, I went from 200 million yesterday to 1.1 billion today, just from about four hours of gameplay. So. There's money to be made and it's easy. So I highly suggest you guys figure out exactly how to core mine. You can watch a couple of my streams. I do it 
I've uh, there's a couple that I've kind of explained it in depth. Um, and then let me see. Oh, this one is reputation two, and then the emission data. So look, I mean, we're we're starting to get some serious reputation, and that means we're going to get better paying missions um, and a higher rep, hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. And then we'll take the money on this one. Any more? I don't need that, but we'll get the rep. Uh, usually that's the move. You just go for, even for the non-aligned factions that aren't, uh, you want to get them uh, as much reputation as you can because you get higher paying missions. So it just makes it all more worth your while later. And then here's a three rep. Take that. All right. So I just turned in all the missions. Let's take a look. Did we get any rank? Yeah, look at that. Uh, I went from 79 to 100% of Baron. So 20% rank increase, probably more than that. And I went from 70% aligned to 99% allied. So you can see, you really can crank up the rank fast. So um, what I'm going to do, is I'll just, I'm going to run a few more missions. Um, I've got about 15 minutes, so I'm, I'm going to probably do one more. So basically, we're just going to launch. I'm going to go back to settlement. <clears throat> but that's how you make rank quickly. So you want to you want to get a cutter, do these rescue missions in the Empire, and you'll be able to get a cutter probably. I don't know. After you know, just a couple of hours, I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking. Well, because what's going to end up happening is after you've ranked up a bunch, then what you have to do is then go to an empire system that offers uh, federal navy missions, uh, so you can do the rank up missions. So there's a, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of tedium there, but um, it's much easier than, uh, especially if you're close. Like I'm close, I think. So I'm just gonna go. Almost there. it is and that would kind of lined up a little bit better that time just going for efficiency here you know it I'm here to save people I'm here to wash my karma Number nine. I mean, you see all that crap floating around in there? There's pad number nine. Oh, I got locked up again. I don't know what I'm hitching up on. It's driving me nuts, though. Right, there we go. Alright, so there we are. I need to get my shields back up. Oh, there we go. I hear you. Alright, so passenger lounge we go and just do it again. So I went up 20% in one mission, and uh, it'll probably be like 15% now because I'm in the next rank. 
So, all right. Oh, only influence. No, we don't want inf We want rep. Okay, they're killing me. Killing me. All right, well, I'm going to take all of them. Because, uh, well, there's rep. Incoming mission critical message. Incoming mission critical message. Well, let's take a look at what that mission critical message is. Passenger impatient. Hey, buddy, I can just space you. Hold your horses or out the airlock you go. These these people, I tell you. I'm saving you. And you're going to be impatient? Better watch yourself. Of course you're impatient. I know you want to get off of this rock. I got gotcha. you. There's a good high paying one. Oh, that's another good high paying one. Oh, and if you need modular terminals, look at that. They're like throwing out a ton of them. Right, here's a... I'm just looking at the higher paying ones now. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're just gonna fill up here. Oh, that would have been nice. Okay, I just need one with four. Let me see. 52, 49, 24. Alright, so you're the winner. You're paying the most. Alright, we're fully loaded. Off we go. Alright, so yeah, this will be the last one I pa passenger mission I run today. And... Uh, that's just how you do it. Taking heat damage. So, it, like, you start taking heat damage before you can launch a heat sink, which doesn't seem to make much sense to me. But hey, you know, whatever. Flying right at it. Yeah. 
You see how this thing drifts? It just keeps going. Big, big ship. There it is. Look at that. see if I can land this thing from this view. Looks like I'm centered. Maybe go just for just a bit. I'm not going to get it, am I? Oh, I'm close. Alright, so I was just left side of the sea. Alright, <laughs> nice! Isn't that nice? Nice view. Alright, so let me, I'm going to take a look at this ship. This is, uh, what did I name this thing? I can't even remember. Oh, there it is. That's the monarch. Of course it is. It's royalty. Look at that. Isn't that great? This is one of my favorite ships. Nice paint job. There it is. What a ship. Anyways. Let's go uh let's go deliver these impatient passengers. So rep it is. right keep on cranking up that uh, what do we got only a plus one rep mechanical scrap I'll take it mm, no I don't need that and I can't I don't have any cargo space so can't take it anyways reputation plus the bulk scan data because, again, you can always trade that stuff up, so you always want to take it. Plus three rep. Yeah, that's right. Alright, and more rep. And then this one, we're going to go reputation and money. Because, again, you might as well go with the money on the ones where you're, where they're not aligned with the Empire, because you're not going to get any Empire rank for them. But I do want to rank up the rep with these minor factions, too. So that you get better paying missions. So it's always it's always good to do it. At least until you get allied. Um, and then once you get allied, then switch your... You're going to switch your... Um, let me see. Reputation 1. And more money. There we go. You'll switch up your tactic. Alright, so there we go. And that is going to do it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, did a lot today. Did some void opal core mining, uh, cracked a billion credits, and then rescued a bunch of uh, refugees and saved them from certain death. Um, 
and got uh, ranked up one rank in one run. So I made over 20% um, experience for that rank. 21%. I was like 79%. So, um, and so I'm well into the next rank. And you don't, the problem is you don't get to see how far along you are until you then go and do the rank up missions. But highly effective. That's the best way to do it if you want to rank up quickly. My goal is to be able to then go buy a cutter because I'm going to go do... I, I decided while I was core mining that I want to fill that thing up with 700 tons of void opal cores and cash it in for a billion plus credits. So uh, that's what I'm probably going to do on Thursday of this week. So if you want to watch me uh, cash in a billion credits from a, a one ship load of um, uh, void opal cores, It'll be on Thursday. So, and also, I'm gonna have a I'll have a brand new cutter, right? And it'll be all all built out for mining. And I've never mined in a cutter before, and it's gonna be awkward because it's a big, nasty pig of a ship that's not very maneuverable. So, that's gonna be fun. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If uh, if you're new to the stream um, and you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, follow whichever platform you're on. Um, still trying to build an audience and I am really regularly streaming. I enjoy doing it. So I'd love for you to know when I'm coming back on. Um, I'll see you Thursday. Thank you very much for watching.